Hey, welcome back. I am standing here with Dr. Rick DiPietro, a senior scientist at IBM. He's come in to show us some fun experiments demonstrating the basics of chemistry. Rick, welcome. Hi, Chris. Thank you for having me. Hoping you could tell me what chemists do at IBM. Well, Chris, I'm with IBM Research. And at IBM Research, we're con concerned with the very basics of chemistry and physics and how they apply to getting a lot of information into a very small space and then getting it out again as fast as we can. All right, That's so the basis of computing. What kind of basics are we going to be covering today? Well, today I wanted to go over one of the very basic principles of chemistry, and that is that chemical reactions have rates. And the, what I want to show you here is how we can improve and increase the rates of reactions in chemistry. Great. And I'm going to use oxidation as, as my vehicle, my reaction vehicle. Okay. And I've got to say, before we get going here, uh, Rick is obviously a professional, so don't try this at home. He's, he's got, that's why he's got the little doctor in front of his name, because he knows what he's doing. Now, Chris, so. I would like you, as, as my associate chemist here, to please put on some goggles. You know what grade I got in chemistry, didn't you? That's why I want you to have the goggles gotcha. on. Okay, let's pretend, for example, that you're an oxygen atom, okay? okay. You be oh, the two. oxygen atom. And what we're going to have here is, a, is a, an ammonium, okay? We've got ammonia here. And these two really want to react, but they're not going to react when one's here and one's here. They're only going to react when one gets closer to the other. It's filled with electron density. It's going to react when it gets close, okay? okay. All right. So what we want to do is increase the rate that oxygen is going to react with something else. All right. Let's start with iron, okay? Here we have 10 pounds of iron. What is this doing? Nothing. In fact... Chris, this is burning. This iron is rusting at the rate of hundreds of thousands of iron atoms a second. Really? Hundreds of thousands. But the rate to us is slow. How can we increase that rate? All right. This is also iron, right? Steel wool. Okay. We have steel wool here. It's like my hair. Okay. And all we have done... Well, you're right. And all we have done here is kidding. we've taken the steel wool, we've taken the iron, and we've increased the surface area of the iron so that oxygen can now get in touch with the iron a lot quicker, okay? So, you saw how this was rusting, right? Not very exciting. No. How about steel wool, all right? See, we what? do in Whoa. fact get some very visible oxidation, okay? Through burning. Yes, in fact, okay. all right? We can make another trick. We want to further increase the surface area, all right? We take the iron and we powder it. We add to that a small amount of oxidizing agent. We put the oxygen right there with the iron. Now, I want you to do this for me, Chris. Okay. Okay, I would you like just to uh, wave that down in there for a second. I'm afraid. There you go. Whoa! Okay. Ha -hoo. See, now you notice that you've got an increase in the oxidation rate. Very obvious. Well, how does this, I mean, before we get too much further, how is this relating really to uh, microchips? I mean, how is this Well, applied? this is a basic principle of chemistry. Okay. And in microchips, in the lubes that operate in the, in the disk drives and all of these things, oxidation is a serious problem all right. over time. But lubes break down and things like that. Are metals the only things that can oxidize? No, in fact, organic compounds also oxidize. Organic compounds? Yeah, organic compounds like, uh, like you, for example. Uh, you've been oxidizing since you got up this morning. Is, that's okay, right? Well, yeah, nature has set it up so that you oxidize very slowly, <laughs> all right? Which is fortunate, wouldn't you say? <laughs> I, uh, as right. long as I'm not burning up, I'm okay. Cellulose, okay? Right. Sounds like my wife thinks it sounds <laughs> like my head, but cellulose. And it oxidizes reasonably well, thank goodness, you know, cold winter nights. Let's give it a little example here, okay? So, see, yeah. some oxidation. We could play the same tricks with cellulose that we played with, uh, with the iron, all right? Oh, more surface area. Well, exactly. Okay. Piece of cotton, right? Yep. Also cellulose. And you can see that the rate is much quicker, okay? Definitely. All right? Let's go one step further. You remember how we did the iron here? Mm hmm Okay. Well, let's take our cotton, and we've treated our cotton with something called an oxidizing agent. So now, not only do we have an increased surface area, but we also have an intimate relationship between oxygen and the cotton. Now, um, why don't you just sort of wave that torch over there? Um, oh, by the way, before we do this, you didn't need that uh, hair on your arm, did you? No. Okay, good. Then go ahead. Okay. Whoa! 
Okay. No, it blew the now, blowtorch out. Did you in fact see an increase in the oxidation rate? Uh, I felt the increase All in right, oxidation excellent. rate too. And what did I tell you? See? Yeah, it's gone. Well, I don't have any either. But anyhow, <clears throat> that I didn't think the flame flew that high. It's pretty obvious. <laughs> You weren't expecting that, were you? No, I wasn't expecting that one, no. <laughs> we didn't rehearse oh, that one. No, we didn't. Um, so what, what about, okay, we've, we've hit some solids. What about some liquids? We can do that. We can do that in liquids. Actually, we're a big bag of liquids, so let's face it, we're oxidizing. But what I want to show you here is something called a clock reaction, okay. all right? And we have a little stir plate in our clock reaction. It is called a clock reaction because there are several reactions going on simultaneously. That's just a magnet spinning around in there. That's all it is. And there's a magnet underneath this plate. And chemists use these things to mix liquids all the time. All right. Wait. Now, I'm going to mix these two together. And you don't have to stand back. Okay. You've got your glasses on. Okay. I'm going to mix these two things together, all right? And this is a clock reaction, which means it has a rate. And okay. it's going to take time. But don't blink. Okay, so we watch it. Okay, watch we're the mixing liquids. these two together. Well, what do you think, huh? Think, is that uh, something or what? Yeah, that's a. Uh, is that something or what? I'm okay. Pretty is that impressed. Something? Yeah, yeah. That's something. And uh, is that that's really something, isn't it? You know, I would have never thought that you yeah. could make cloudy water uh -huh. just by mixing two. Yeah, uh, two that's really. Oh! Whoa! There we go. Okay. No way! Yes, way. No way! So that's a clock reaction. <laughs> we had a whole bunch of reactions going on, and then the last one's very fast. Okay. What happened? Well, that was so neat. There's a lot of chemistry going on in there. We can only see the last step. Wow. Okay. But there, no camera tricks, folks. I kid you not. The thing just turned black immediately. There it is. Now, what did you mix? What two chemicals did you mix then? Well, there's actually more than two chemicals in here. There's quite a selection of chemicals. But you, know? you have to be very careful. You don't want to just yeah, go mixing different parts at home. This is not something that you'll want to do at home. No. And in fact, these are things that you can't find at home. Good. <laughs> but what I wanted to emphasize is that you know this is a basic principle: rates of reaction and oxidation is a vehicle for rates of reaction. Very basic principle. And these basic principles are what we use in information technology. All right down at the chip level and at the disk drive level at the at the surface of the disk and the heads those are all very basic chemistry and physics because oh. they're they're microscopic right now we are developing techniques where we can do wiring chip wiring where the wires have the dimension of about uh, about a thousandth of the diameter of a human hair that's small very small. Very, very small. So there's chemical processes happening even in our personal computers. We never see them. Correct. Unless they oxidize and rust kind of gets Well, cleaned. yeah, there is rust and have things like that. You're more likely to have mechanical problems as a result of, say, lube breakdown or something right. like that. Well, thank you, doctor. Hey, it was fun. Y yeah, it was. You got to try that trick again. That was neat. Anytime. If you want to learn more about these cool chemistry experiments, visit our website, techtv.com slash call for help. Uh, next, one of our lucky callers gets a chance at fame and fortune, or at least a pocket PC or PaintShop Pro. It's the Wired World Challenge when Call for Help continues.